What's up guys, John Hammond here, still looking at Pico CTF 2017. So we're moving into the cryptography section of level two, and this challenge is called So Random for 75 points. So the prompt here is, we found so random.py running at shell2017.picoctf.com at that port number. Uh, it seems to be outputting the flag, but randomizing all the characters first. Is there any way to get the original flag back? And that's running Python 2, it says. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this link here. So we can download this, make a directory for us to work in. Let's get this source code. And it looks like it is running itself on this netcat connection. So let's connect to that. And okay, it gives us the randomized flag. So let's take note of that. Cool. And let's subble to open up Sublime Text or any text editor that you want to use. Um, and let's check out the so random.python file. Okay, so this is the source code for the for the challenge here. Looks like it's using the random module and the string module, um, creating the flag originally from the file on the server, so we don't have that to begin with, um, but we know it should start with flag, and that must be why ours starts with that BNZQ here, so uh, we don't need this anymore. Let's turn off flake. Stop. Thanks. Um, so if we were to say flag would equal that originally. Let's see what we can do with reversing this program because it looks like it seeds the random number generator with the random module. So when you seed a random number generator, it it's the initial value essentially, or it's like putting up the setting up the program, setting up the machine to crunch out random num numbers, but they're only pseudo random. There is no real notion of a actual random number in computer programs. And the hints here kind of points to that. So computers can't really be all that random. So um, it looks like it is looping through all the characters in the original flag and then rotating them so according to this comment, um, adding on the encrypted version of the flag based on whether or not it's a character or not. So it looks like it is taking a the original ordinary ordinal character, changing it to a random number that it gets out of the random number generator, um, mod 26, so it's in the alphabet and putting it back in the base of where it was in the, lower, in the alphabet, lowercase or uppercase, getting the ordinal value. So this would display something out, but if so, if I just run this, it looks like it's going to run that operation now on the encrypted flag. But since they are seeding the random number generator with a actually constant value, like this is a string here. This is just random. Um, the string, the, literally the word text random, not any number or thing. Like normally people will try and seed a random number generator with the current time because that at least changes every second. But that is also insecure in that someone could just, okay, align a program to kind of catch up with time once that original program executes and tinker with it. That's an attack on pseudo random number generators that use that use time to seed it. So since we're seeding with a constant value that we know, we're going to have the same random numbers and the same random data output every single time since it's a constant value. So if this is what they originally used, let's just try and work backwards from what they're trying to do. So if they had actually had this random number added to it, what if we were to remove it? So let's switch these lines up to not add this random number, but subtract it. And then if I run this, oh boy, okay, <laughs> there is flag, right? The original text that we expected here and a set of numbers. So this must be it. Maybe this is the flag. Let's go ahead and try and submit this. Submit. And okay, we got it. Awesome. <laughs> Challenge done. So what that was doing is just using this I, I hate to say algorithm because it's not really an algorithm, but looping through that string they originally had, this the encrypted version is what we were given. So we can take that encrypted version and work backwards by just kind of reverting or negating the operation that they did, adding on random numbers. And it doesn't matter where or how or in what sequence these random numbers came because we have that random seed set to the same thing. The number sequence will be the same every time. So that will just work out for us. <laughs> okay, cool. If you guys don't understand that, we're definitely going to be working with more uh, random number generators or pseudo random number generators in later capture the flag competitions. Uh, I actually, I actually even have a challenge of my own that I had tried to create where we are seeding a random number generator or a pseudo random number generator with time, uh, and we can get around that. But 
this is an, an easy example of seeding a random number generator with a constant value. So if we know that value, then dude, we can just get the exact, we can run this code, like execute the same Python script with that same input, with that same setup and be done. So that's that. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Hey, I have to give some love and support to my supporters, people that are willing to give me some donations and whatever I am super grateful for and appreciative on Patreon. So all of these individuals are phenomenal. This list keeps growing, and I am grateful for it, and hopefully that it will grow a little bit more. $1 a month on Patreon will give you this uh, little shout-out at the end of every video. $5 a month on Patreon will give you early access to every video that I create before it goes on YouTube. And, uh... That's that. If you want any more incentives, please let me know what other what other cool things we could do. But that's all I've got for right now. Hey, if you did like this video, please do press that like button. Maybe leave me a comment if you're willing. Maybe subscribe. And if you really want to support me, check me out on Patreon or my website, www.johnhammond.org. Thanks. See you later.